co-hosted today by an all-star cast, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield, two-star. Good morning, Rob. And, right. and the star. Maria Lawrence, an all-star. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Very quickly, going for Joe Ferretti. Unfortunately, that's my political breakfast, so I'll miss it tomorrow. <laughs> Is Joe going to be looking backward to the decisions that's been made this past session? Correct. Or looking forward to some of the cases that will be in front of the uh, Supreme Court? Also correct. Also correct. It's a full. So you're you're gonna have to tune in somehow. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm sorry to miss that. Joe is <laughs> Joe, uh, Joe provides such insight. It's always he really does, and he he makes it so clear uh, to easily understood. He also uh, he may want to address a few bills that uh, may be circulating yeah. through the legislature yeah. in regards to elections as well. He, he yeah. brought that up to me in a text. Sure. Because he was regretting missing this Friday, I think he wanted to make that part of his. Uh, uh, discussion point on Friday. Well, sure. that's is he golfing? What's he doing Friday? I didn't ask. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But See, I'm, he has to travel someplace. I was going to say. I'm I would have sure asked because I'm nosy yeah. that way. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one that Joe's talking about is one of my potential issues as well. So even if Joe's not here, that issue may be brought you up. You will have it. Yeah. Our guest in this segment is the superintendent of schools in Berkeley County, Dr. Ryan Sachs. Doc, how are you this morning? It's good to be here. Doing great. Good to have you. You look relaxed. <laughs> Well, that's before we what ask questions. Say? Yeah, there you go. That's Stop. Stop. I listen to you. Yeah, that's no, good. We're doing well. We're doing well. You've been on the job now, what, uh, four months? Almost four months, yes. Uh, we were just uh, talking, and it's hard to believe it feels like it's been longer because we have a lot of great things going on. But, yeah, it's just uh, we're moving into month four. You have a big uh, celebration today, right? We do. We do. Um, we have the – Groundbreaking ceremony for the new Hedgesville Early Learning Academy, which is our new pre-K center, and it marks the first of the bond projects that are is a full new school. Um, so it's one of the four new schools that we'll be constructing, and so we break ground today. It um, it really is um, a mile marker uh, because it's going to provide generations of children in Berkeley County a uh, world-class educational foundation um, at this new center. Where Give us some of the details. Where will it be? How big will it be? How many kids can it accommodate? Yeah, so uh, this uh, project will be, the, the building is going to be located um, over uh, next to Hedgesville High School, um, in between Hedgesville High School and James Rumsey Technical Center. Um, it's going to um, accommodate 160 uh, students, um, possibly a few more, possibly some more students if we add a couple more classrooms that we're thinking about going ahead and investing in right now, but we're still looking at that proposal. But 160 students to start off with, for sure. Um, and what's really unique about this facility is, is because it's only focused on early learning, pre-K. Um, we're going to have both indoor and outdoor activity areas for the students. So think of not maybe necessarily a traditional gymnasium, but we're going to have an indoor activity area where climbing, uh, sensory, um, sen a sensory wall, um, uh, it's going to be a really innovative space for our students to um, not only learn in, but also um, be engaged with uh, their environment and uh, have some physical activity as well during the day. What's a sensory wall? Um, a sensory wall is uh, different things. Like, so, you know, if you see like this wall over here, you know, if you feel it, you're going to feel different textures. So there's different textures. There's gadgets and gadgets that they can turn and spin there's a there's these pipe tubes where they can talk into it and then their friend can be on the other end of the building or other in the room and they can hear and they can have conversations so it's different things on the wall that evoke the senses uh, of the student's sight sound smell hearing touching those types of things Will you be at capacity the day you open, or oh you yeah, oh yes, we will be at capacity, um, and we what we hope to be able to accomplish is to be able to take some of the pre-K classrooms, well, all of the pre-K classrooms out of the middle schools and high schools, and some of the surrounding elementary schools, so that uh, I should say the surrounding primary schools, so that any of our schools that are primary that currently have um, you know third grade uh, as well as intermediate schools that need to have third grade can address those capacity issues. And that's why we're also looking at adding um, actually four additional classrooms as part of this project. So um, if if we're able to add the four additional classrooms, we'll go up to um, 240 student capacity as well. And what will the hours of operation be for the ELA? Uh, it'll be the same hours of operations as any of our other, other schools. So, um, you know, 8 to 2.30 or so. Okay. Now, yep. now pre-K, 
Um, uh, is there a requirement for potty training to be admitted to this uh, ELA? Well, we we do expect students to be potty trained. However, if there are issues, then we work with our families on those types of things. Um, you know, especially if we have students that are, you know, the, the, the thing about uh, pre-K is, is that students can be early admitted based upon if they have an if they already have a, a learning disability of some sort or if, or a physical disability. And so if they are early admitted, they can come in as early as three years old. So those students are definitely not always potty trained. And, and so we work with our families families to be able to mm -hmm. build student skills in those areas. Um, we also work with brushing teeth and washing hands and all those things. So we're, we're helping build those skills with our children. The other thing that's unique about pre-K is, is that we try to do family style eating. So they'll actually be eating in their classrooms, sort of family style, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to going to a cafeteria to eat as well. So, Well, if you have any issues, you need volunteers for potty training help, you go see Bill because he doesn't <laughs> mind cleaning up. He's okay with that. <laughs> Yeah. I just volunteered yeah, you, Bill. I, Bonnie says hey, she would attest to that. She would agree to that. <laughs> <laughs> Maria. Yeah. So, so this is one center that will accommodate at some point 240 mm -hmm. students. So tell us about the plans for others around the county, or is this – one and done. Uh, no, that's a that's a great that's a um, a great question. So back um, when the school's comprehensive educational facilities plan, the ten year facilities plan was created, you know, to be able to address the the capacity issues that we have across all of our schools, um, you know, we we have a, a great need for more intermediate classrooms and of course middle schools um, and then you know high school classrooms as well, but. In order to address those things, we first had to be able to address where are we putting our pre-K students and our primary students. So how can we address the capacity there first so that we can address the capacities in our three through five facilities? And so in order to do that, we needed to be able to address our pre-K because, again, we have pre-K all – it's it's exploding. Um, we have pre-K classrooms in middle schools, high schools, and, of course, our collaborative partners. But um, we needed to focus on pre-K. So Hedgesville is the first pre-K center. The next one is going to be Inwood. So Inwood will be the next pre-K center. Um, then we have two other schools that will went once um, – uh, Mountain Ridge uh, Primary is constructed, will become, those, those two schools will become primary centers. And then um, Pikeside is also a pre-K center, and um, it, it also will be uh, refocused as a pre-K center as well. So, but, but nothing in Martinsburg per se. Uh, well, that actually Winchester, for example, Winchester um, Elementary. Once we get through all these phases, will actually become a a pre K center itself. Yes. Okay. So there there is a plan for other schools to come on board, become pre K. But that's but that's in different phases over the next five or six years as it relates to the new schools that will be coming online. Then we can we can take care of the boundary issues and we can take care of, of uh, school capacity issues, but there will be schools like Winchester that will become a pre-K center. And you talked the last time you were here and now we're into month two, I believe. And I think you gave us a number um, of students that you, uh, that you estimated was the increase of students 550, if I'm, if I'm remembering that correctly, that's right. Yeah, um, is that still the number, or we we have scrubbed the the data a little bit. Uh, our second month enrollment report um, um, was just just sort of um, it, it is being finalized. We're actually sitting probably closer to around tw uh, twenty thousand fifteen students, so we're closer to the three hundred student mark um, after all of the all of the the data has been scrubbed. Uh, our that that 550 a student number was based upon our 10-day count so we've had some additional students after other school districts opened up that that actually had some transfers out that we were able to um, actually fully record do you have a count for the number of kids who are attending charter the public charter schools in the area that you may have lost out of your uh, <coughs> traditional public school system um, I'm sure we do. I just don't have that on the. Uh, I don't have that at the tip of my tongue. That's okay. Um, but that is something that we track. Um, we're actually doing a new enrollment projection. Um, we did one about uh, five years ago, and that that enrollment projection is being updated. We'll have it in early November. 
But some of the information that we'll glean from there is, is as it relates to <clears throat> where we expect our enrollment to be by school over the next five years. That helps us also decide how many classrooms we need in these new facilities, those types of things to address uh, capacity. But part of what we'll be able to yield from that is, is how many students do we have going to homeschool? How many students do we have going to private school? How many students do we have going to charter school? Will that uh, attrition of students who are going to the, a public charter school or maybe take advantage of the Hope Scholarship and go to a private school, will that delay the need to construct new schools going forward or is that bleed not quite voluminous enough oh no it um you know um we are still busting at the seams and we are still seeing um significant growth in our our public school population um and so if anything some of those things have actually probably helped us um and so i think that helped us from a school capacity uh, issue and so no it does not it does not mitigate the need at all um we, we we are still very much needing to focus on adding classrooms adding schools to ensure that we can fit all of our students in the buildings that we have and that we need to provide uh, learning for students a subject we did, were going to discuss last time but not we run out of time did not do it is your no cell phone policy in the schools mm -hmm. how's that working i'm going to tell you that um you know when we started to look at that you know i um first of all i have to applaud the board the board the, our board had the vision for that and I think that there was a lot of uh, buy-in from our staff very early on. But uh, I anticipated a lot more um, concerns being brought forward, um, especially after implementation. But it has been very smooth. Um, I had a conversation about two or three weeks in with um, some students at Martinsburg High School. And uh, when I engage with our students, I'll ask them questions about, what, what, hey, what do you like about school? What do you not like? But at that time, I was, I was saying, hey, tell me about the cell phone policy. What, what are your thoughts? How, how's it working? And this young man who was a junior said, you know, um, for the first time in my high school experience, I'm having great conversations with my classmates. He said it used to be you'd finish an assignment in class. Uh, you, the last couple minutes of class, if there was a little bit of downtime, you know, um, students would immediately go to their phone and be checking social media or, or texting with their other friends or whatever, and there was never a conversation with their classmates. He said, we're actually having meaningful conversations. And the way that he said it was with such, like, um, hope and with, like, excitement that it was almost chilling for me. You know, it was a perspective that I really hadn't thought about. It's the personal connections that students need to have in their schooling uh, with their classmates that, that provide, you know, memorable experiences. And I think that that has been stolen over the last several years because of, of technology. And so I think that it was very, it's been very well received and um, our schools are, are doing a great job implementing um, the uh, policy. You know, occasionally we'll hear a, a, a question over consistency in, in application and we quickly address those situations so that people understand, look, this is, this is the expectation um, from the boardroom to the classroom. This is, this is what we expect. And so um, it's gone very well and I'm very, very pleased. So how does that work, Dr. Sachs? Do people, um, do teachers have a, a basket that kids put them in? Do you just say, don't bring them at all? Does it stay in a locker? Yeah. Um, what's the, or is it just a school by school sort of um, the way it works? Well, we, the, the policy dictates that um, for students in elementary, for example, K through five, that um, it needs to be either not brought to school, put in a locker, put away in their, in their backpack to where it's not, you know, easily accessible. Um, or, or readily accessible to where it could become a distraction. Um, at the middle school and high school level, it just needs to be off and away. So that can be in their pocket and off um, or, you know, or in their locker because they can use it during lunchtime. So at lunchtime, they can pull their devices out and use it, you know, uh, as they, as they f freely can um, or before school or after school. So that's how that's reinforced. Now, there may be classrooms that when they come in in order to avoid temptation that teachers have a basket or um you know the, there's folders on doors those you know where they can pop it in a pocket um so those those 
resources do exist in different areas, but that's school teacher discretion. As long as this, as long as we're compliant with the policy, then we're fine. So that is as often away. Um, now there have been other school districts out there that have employed other pieces of resources. Um, I don't know the exact names of them, but they're like, um, there's a pocket where you pop your, your cell phone in there and it's, it's sort of locked until the end of the day and you can pick, take it up to a magnet and it releases it. Um, I, I don't know that we're in, a, in an area where we need something like that because I think really everybody's just following the rule. And so that's if that's you good. go to a concert or see a comedian or whatever, many of them use those now. They'll ask you to put your phone in that pocket so you can't record any of the show. Oh, wow. And, and uh, replay it later on or whatever. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, Ron, uh, one of our uh, listeners, uh, BD Curious, mentioned there's going to be a food collection in Hedgesville today uh, mm-hmm. for the folks in uh, uh, the hurricane disaster in North Carolina. You know, can you speak to that? Are you aware of it? I, I'm actually not, but okay. uh, I'm glad to hear that we have something like that taking place. Is it through the school system? It, it's at Hedgesville High School. Oh, okay. be collecting, collecting school supplies to send to the Carolinas. Well, that's fantastic. Okay, I yeah. applaud our Hedgesville students yeah. and our, yeah. our faculty mm-hmm. for doing something like that. And I'm glad we can publicize that yeah. here. So yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah. What's the latest progress at North Middle? North Middle is uh, doing very well. Um, uh Again, the, the, the improvement plan that was structured by the school leadership team and the faculty um, is, is being implemented, and um, I, we're, we're seeing that it's a, it's a different feeling school than it was a year ago. Um, and they're implementing a new curriculum resource called iReady, which is um, a math and ELA um, instructional resource. We actually use it in our, inter- our elementary schools as well, but this is actually facili- uh, designed for middle school students, and we're seeing um, really, really good implementation, and I think that, um, I think they're just on the, on the, on the path to success. So what are, the, what are the benchmarks, what's your next one that you have to meet? And do? How do you get rid of the state in this situation, <laughs> in other words? Well, I think that, you know, I don't, I, I would say that I don't know that my, my direction is to necessarily get get rid of the state so to speak. my words not yours <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. well and the reason i say that is is because the state is actually a, a wonderful collaborative partner you know uh, they have a, a plethora of resources um and um so i think that for us the next benchmark is is to show that we can consistently apply the the practices that lead to student success um, i think that we're going to have to show that our students are um are, are improving in their academic attainment of skills. And so I think that the West Virginia GSA is going to be a huge barometer as to how learning has been impacted. Um, and I do expect to see uh, significant improvements in academic performance um, year over year. But this year is going to be a, a huge benchmark for us. Do you expect them to be at the school the entire year? I, I would anticipate that um, – you know, I, I really don't know, actually. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I would welcome it. Um, I think that that brings consistency. Um, and, you know, they're they're there like once a week um, with their support um, individual. She's a fantastic, um, I would say, instructional, instructional leadership coach for our administration. Um, but I think that that's going to be up to the West Virginia Department, uh, West Virginia State Board of Education. We have an update, I think, that we provided them in November. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it'll be their feedback that will give us some direction. Um, but um, While the school is in this status, is there a requirement for you or somebody in administration to visit this school on a particularly regular basis? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. How often do you have to be there? Well, um, I, I would say that um, we do that on our own. Um, Holly Kleppner, who is our executive director of secondary schools, is there – several times a week. Um, and, um, uh, we have, uh, uh, opportunities when the, when the state comes in that we're all there together. Um, so we're, we're, we're there on a regular basis. So do you know when the state's going to be there? Is it like a surprise attack? Um, my words, <laughs> not no, or like fine. Rob's. Uh, well, I think sometimes it's both. Sometimes okay. it's both. You know, we have a regular schedule where the the West Virginia Department of Education support specialist that's with the school is mm-hmm. there on a regular basis working with the school, uh, reporting reporting out, um, you know, what's working, where we need to tweak. Um, and then occasionally the state's going to say, hey, you know what, we're, we're going to be there tomorrow, by the way. And, and that we that's great with us. You know, we want, we want that. 
Um, so we had heard problems, of course, about uh, too many fights, uh, too many kids in the hallways. Are you getting reports that those numbers have dropped significantly? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you can go into North and you, you, um, it's it, if there are students in the hallway, they're actually going to the bathroom, you know, or they're, they're going somewhere with purpose. Not, not in the hallway. You mean they're going to the bathroom in the bathroom. They're going to the bathroom in the bathroom. Yes. They're, they're, they're traveling to the restroom. Thank you for the clarification. <laughs> yes. Words matter. You know, people take clips and they do yeah, whatever they that's want. That's right. Um, and so, uh, th- I think that again, you're seeing people working with purpose and that's important. I think that uh, teachers are supported by the administrators when it comes to discipline. Um, I think that the other thing that, you know, I prepared the, the state and the state prepared us. I, I, we talked with our board and that is, is that, you know, as it relates to suspensions and those types of things, we, we're going to see an increase at the beginning of the year because we're reinforcing the expectations. Now our hope is, is that as classroom instruction has been improved, which we're seeing that, behaviors actually decrease because students are, are more engaged in meaningful ways in the classrooms teach. And the reason is, is because teachers have the resources they need. We've made sure that we're, we're investing in the resources for our teachers, the professional development our teachers need around how to best use the curriculum that we have provided. And, um, it's just, uh, everybody, everybody's, everybody's going in the right, same direction. And if correct me, if I'm wrong, I want to, I want to say that I recall there were, 12 new staff members there this year is it 12 do you know do you remember i, the I don't remember the talk i know that we had a significant number of uh, new staff members and um you know one of the things that i always um I, I reflect on is is that um we have to have the right people in the right place and i think that we've been able to do that for north middle school i think we've been able to do it all across our district this school year so dr ryan Sachs has been our guest here in this segment just a a couple of minutes left here. Uh, the previous superintendent used to like to do shout outs to call attention to some good things that were happening in the school system. Do you have any that you're ready to do? Uh, I do. Detail? I do. Um, so uh, we have a job fair uh, October 10th um, from 4.30 to 6.30 at our Berkeley County School Central Office um, off of Winchester Avenue. We're looking for uh, continuing to hire substitute teachers, instructional aides, custodians, secretaries, cooks, bus drivers. Um, and so uh, um, if anybody's interested, we have positions opened. See, Bill, um, you can still be the bus driver. That's right, Bill. That's right. Not the way I drive. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we, um, uh, I want to, I want to commend all of our teachers and our staff for um, just um, a, a great school year thus far. We're all working uh, toward the same end goal, and that is to make sure that every single Berkeley County student walks across the stage being college, career, or military and enlistment ready. And that, that does not just happen at the high school. That happens from pre-K through our primary, our intermediate, our middle schools. It takes uh, uh, all of us working in concert, and I couldn't be more proud of the school district today. Yeah. How is your relationship with the Board of Education? Fantastic. Listen, I, I am so proud of our, our elected board. Um, we had our board meeting the other day and, you know, it was a lengthy board meeting, but I would say 80% of it was focused on student learning and, and instruction. And as I said to them, that is refreshing as a superintendent because you don't always have that. Uh, we have a board that is focused on doing what is best for students and making sure that our students are learning at high levels. And um, I'm excited to be a part of it. Great to have you with us, sir. Thank you. 